What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Well, I think next Monday we'll be back to normal. My voice has gotten a bit better every day, and I think after the weekend we should be good to go in the normal setup. But, of course, we just still have a bunch of stuff to go over, especially after yesterday, when we saw some information start to trickle out there around not just the Switch 2, but actually the production around its initial shipment and how Nintendo could actually be battling against scalpers, which I think is something most of us would like to see, but... We'll go over that here today. Also, we are going to be talking about uh, more sales for Black Friday. This time, though, for people who have been holding out and waiting for physical copies, it looks like some of your waiting there is actually going to pay off with these different discounts that are popping up. And then we'll also be taking a look at Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D with the initial sales figures. It turns out this game is going to sell really well. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members of the channel do get Newswave early. If you would like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. And we're going to start today with Avowed, which is out in about three months. I know it's 2025, but it's technically February 2025. And it's, it's hard to believe we're already just about at the end of 2024. But here we are. Either way, previews did go live for Avowed, and we had a bunch of outlets as well as some creators on YouTube get to spend three or four hours with the latest game from Obsidian. And I uh, like, for example, Eurogamer, I think, did a good job here breaking it down in their video. And if you want to just be able to read through some of the key points, Shinobi did a pretty serious breakdown over on X, going over some of the bullet points like the game is not fully open world, it's open zones technically, and the reason Obsidian says they're doing that is because they can have each area being fully handcrafted, just having interesting things to do in it. If you do want to be more stealthy, it actually benefits you as you can seemingly sneak around large areas of enemies and just skip entire parts completely. The leveling system they've mentioned is more structured, so you spend skill points in named skill trees like Fighter or Ranger. And, I mean... As soon as I saw this, and I'm sure many other people, they thought, oh, Skyrim, like right away. But it's not necessarily being compared to it in that same, like, open-ended, expansive Skyrim. It seems a bit more refined, a bit more focused. And I actually don't mind that because I do feel like the open world thing, the big open world just to be big, has kind of played out a bit. So, yeah, I'm keeping out on Avowed. And then they also show the third-person mode, which is something else that people have been hoping for to see more of. So, at least from what we're seeing now from these previews, Avowed is shaping out to be quite the release for Obsidian, but we'll see more as we get into next year with February. Also, here's a fun announcement for Switch owners out there. You can see this trailer. That's right, Roller Coaster Tycoon. This is Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic, which apparently, according to the Steam page, combines elements from Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and Tycoon 2. And I just remember playing this back in the day on PC, like way, way back in the day on uh, on uh, on my PC, like my Pentium 190 megahertz or something. But this was a classic game, building up a theme park, having roller coasters that hopefully worked and making sure you had things set up for all the customers that came through so they didn't throw up all over the the park. But either way, this is coming out December 5th. It's been on Steam and, and mobile phones for quite some time. It was just really cool to see that pop up. It just gave me so, some a heavy nostalgia there for Roller Coast Tycoon. And I'm sure there will be many people, maybe have never played it before, who experienced it for the first time on Switch. And technically, it should work pretty well, considering you have the touchscreen for that system. And that, of course, played in with the mobile phones and stuff. So, hey, it should be a pretty cool release. Check out that one December 5th. Oh, and we did get the winner for the Golden Joysticks Ultimate Game of the Year. And we can see that over on their account. That's right. Black Myth Wukong actually won it. And there have been concerns around this. I know in the media, going back and forth, people were thinking Black Myth Wukong might get snubbed across the board. But here it is, the Golden Joysticks. Took that one home. Now, I, I saw this, and I'm, I think this was one that was community voted just in general as how they have their setup, if I'm not mistaken. And obviously, Black Myth Wukong sold very, very well, and there are many people out there who enjoyed the game. So I think this lines up and, and makes a lot of sense. And I enjoyed it myself as well. Even though it, I don't think it'd be my game of the year, it, sure, it, it makes sense here. But there we go. Ultimate game of the year with the golden joysticks goes to Black Myth Wukong. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the Switch 2, which I actually haven't talked about in quite some time for all the comments down there say I go over it every single day. Not the case, and mostly because there just hasn't been much to talk about. But this one was interesting for two reasons. One, the setup for it is hilarious to read out loud. And two... It is something that I would like to see Nintendo do because, let's face it, 
we get really excited about a new system. When Nintendo shows the Switch 2, a lot of people are going to be really, really excited, hyped up for it and stuff. And then the realization is going to set in of, am I going to be able to get this thing on launch day? Well, we can see this posted up. This is over on Reddit with their gaming leaks and rumors page. And so what happens here is Famaboards shows up with information that they do their best to encode. As in like they'll try to hide it from just the internet at large, but they'll still post on a public forum. So they have ways to hide text. And in this case, they actually put it in code and using base 64, you're able to figure out what they were trying to say. But Reddit doesn't care about any of that. So what they do is even if the post is hidden on fan boards, they copy and paste it publicly. And you can see they even decoded it with base 64. Now, this was from an account that originally did sketches of different things for the, the newer Switch system. Like the dock was something that got a sketch. And come on, that on its own is funny. Like people are sketching stuff out. But we can see it has been decoded for with base 64. And it says the initial stock quantity has been finalized and the factory will plan production accordingly. I can't disclose the exact number, but for the U.S. market alone, it's roughly 2.5 times the volume from March 2017. Now, we do know just based on shipping logs that, yes, parts are going out to some of these factories. Like people are got, have gotten to the point, by the way, that they are down to like seeing shipping logs for where certain things are going where, and that way they can track different parts of this new system from Nintendo. So we've kind of already seen that a lot of this stuff is being gathered for mass production. Go figure, a system is, is going into production. We know this as Nintendo will be announcing the system anyway here before March 31st, 2025. So we're not too far off technically, one way or the other. Um, but the thing that was really interesting here is Nintendo Life also went through and tried to add context to this because the way Nintendo launched the, the current Switch in 2017, they did it where there was one month left in their fiscal year, which means that they then disclosed how many systems they sold in that first month, which is the launch time period for it. And we can see Nintendo Life points out that the sales of 2.74 million Switches by the end of March 2017 was how... Well, it was like the launch quantity. So if we go by 2.5 times that amount. The suggestion here is that it's nearly 7 million units globally in time for launch. And that is quite substantial. The PS4 was like, they say 2.1 million units his first two weeks on sale. Then Sony called that the, the PS5 is fastest selling console after it sold 10 million systems and it's 249 days. So yeah, nearly 7 million Switch 2's ready for launch is uh, is almost an overwhelming amount of not amount of systems because you would normally ship out an okay amount since look you, you're on the hook for all the parts right you have to get all this together you have to source them you then have to create enough systems over a certain time period it's not like the factory snap their fingers and they're all done they have so many they can do fifty thousand a day or something and they have to keep piling them up over time and in warehouses it's a whole thing right so seven million units. I feel like would at least give us a pretty good shot at getting these things at launch, even if scalpers did everything possible to try to procure as many as they could online. To me, this would just open up more avenues of going into a store like a GameStop, a Best Buy, Walmart, I guess, Target, and just getting orders in, even just standing in line. So yes, I'm really hoping that Nintendo realizes that, wow, more than 140 million people have bought a Switch maybe 7 million people would buy this thing at launch and we wouldn't be left with these systems sitting on store shelves. Yeah, you think? You could launch the Switch 2 whenever they want. It doesn't have to be in a holiday, a holiday time period. They can launch it in May and, and, and it would still sell out. So yes, I, I hope this is the plan and the strategy is just to provide like an excessive amount of systems compared to any other launch and that we can all get them at the standard MSRP because it gets real annoying when these systems come out and then scalpers mark them up two to three times. And we've seen that play out over and over again with some of these recent launches. So here's hoping this is a correct rumor and report. It was in, the, it, we had to use base 64. It was, it was encoded. There's a whole thing going on here. Kind of gives me flashbacks to the old switch 2017 switch miss days. So here's hoping we do roll into next year with a switch to launch. That is very easy to actually find the system. Next up, let's talk about Black Friday sales, especially if you're gonna be looking around over the weekend because Amazon's already started a bunch of them. Like it, it's actually a pretty significant number of games that have been marked down quite well. And some of these games are like pretty recent. They're not that old. Some of them coming out this year and many of them actually being nominated for different categories in the game awards coming up. 
but along with games, we do have some hardware, specifically accessories for your current system. So for example, if you were looking for micro SD cards, they're on sale and they're marked down quite well. Like you can see, for example, the 512 gigabyte SD card is $32. Remember when the Switch first came out, we were talking about hundreds of dollars for like a, like a 400 gigabyte card and it sounded incredible. Well, like the 512 gigabyte being $32 is a pretty good deal. Even if you go down to like the 256 gigabyte, that's $19. Basically, right now is a good time to buy storage. Even on the Xbox Series with those little Western Digital cards, it's 100 bucks for a one terabyte, which, I mean, that's that's about right for a proprietary stick that you buy for just the Xbox from a limited market. But then you look over at NVMe, uh, NVMe drives for, say, the PS5. I noticed that a two terabyte Predator M2 is down to about $116. So that's pretty good. Keep an eye on storage, though, because that does tend to go also on sale. For Cyber Monday, you might see more of them pop up. Now, when it comes to games, as I mentioned, these are all physical copies. Most of them are just prime shipped, so they'll show up in a couple of days. And this should make holiday shopping for gamers and your family or friends pretty easy because there's some good ones here. So let's take a look. We'll just kind of scroll through the, the entire page that Black, the Black Friday page that Amazon has set up. Starting with Armor Core 6, that's 20 bucks. Awesome title, easy recommendation, along with Elden Ring, by the way, $20. I mean, 40 bucks, you can get two really good FromSoft games back to back. Persona 3 Reload, that's $25. Final Fantasy Anniversary Collection, this has Final Fantasy 1 through 6, it's 55. Keep in mind, this is normally like a $75 game from Square Enix. Good for the collection, by the way, too. Unicorn Overlord, that da that's down to $30. Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, $19. There was also a recent patch for the Master Collection that did work to make it a bit better in terms of visuals and that kind of thing. So this, this I think, is a good time to pick that collection up. Octopath Traveler 2 at $25. Star Ocean Second Story R, $20. What an awesome RPG to pick up there at 20. Star Wars Heritage Pack is $40. It's on the Switch, and I think it has seven different Star Wars games available in it. Then you have Star Wars Outlaws at $50. Sandland, this is the one I'm picking up, by the way. I've been waiting for this to drop in price, 20 bucks. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, that one's $25. Easy recommendation there. Tekken 8, fighting game fans out there, $30. Dragon's Dogma 2 at $40. Resident Evil 4, that's the, the remade one, the recent one, $20. Bucks. Returnal at $40. Visions of Mana at $45. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, one of the Game of the Year nominees at $40. Final Fantasy 16, that one's $25. You can actually get two good Final Fantasy games back to back there, $65. Bucks. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink at $30. Gundam Breaker 4 at $30. I think that's another one I'm going to check out i've been wanting to play one of these gundam breaker games and that at 30 sand lane at 20 50 bucks ship that's pretty good dragon quest monsters the dark prince at 30 dollars persona 5 royal 25 dollars and Mos the monster hunter stories collection that has uh stories one and two in one title at 40 bucks and as i mentioned these are just some of the games on sale amazon has pages and pages of different games that are marked down so if you come across any good or interesting ones leave some suggestions down below especially since i mean they're physical copies that you can add to the collection that's always a nice bonus even if it's like five dollars more than the digital version next up let's talk about dragon quest 3 hd 2d which did come out last week and now we have some initial sales numbers out of japan this would be the Famitsu sales charts that gives us a look week to week in terms of sales for software and hardware in japan in this case it would be the first what like couple of days for this game being on sale and we can see this is over on install base forum and yeah the game's at the top on the switch 641,195 copies right below that is the ps5 version of the game 180,575 i want to remind you guys that this game actually sold out in some of the larger retailers across Japan. So Square Enix kind of shortchanged stock of this game. In fact, I think if they provided more stock, it would have cleared 1 million copies sold physically. This isn't counting digital in Japan alone. Yeah, Dragon Quest, by the way, very popular in Japan. Go figure. But I think Dragon Quest 3 HD2D Remake is just going to do very well in general. So really, really cool. Also, keep in mind, the Switch sold significantly more than Sony's PlayStation did here. Makes you think that maybe Square is like, oh, we should make sure Dragon Quest 12 is available 
on a Nintendo platform when it comes out. So I'm call. I mean, it's obvious. Switch to release is what I'm looking at there for Dragon Quest 12. Moving on, we have Super Mario Party Jamboree, then Mario and Luigi Brothership, Beyblade X X1, not to be confused with the Xbox One release. 9,507 copies in this debut. Animal Crossing New Horizons, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, of course, Minecraft, Romance Saga 2, and then Luigi Mansion 3 rounds out the top 10. Moving over to the hardware, the Switch is back at the top 62,158. We have the PS5 with a pretty significant drop down to 23,672. The Xbox Series jumped a bit, th just over 3,000 systems, and the PS4 dropped a bit to 35. Now, if you look at the PS5 Pro split, 13,878 of those systems were the PS5 Pro, which kind of mimics the PS4 Pro when that first came out in Japan, had a decent opening week as we talked about, and then it dropped quite significantly. Very similar to PS5 Pro, but the Pro is technically here, the PS5, still trending above the PS4 Pro. So it, it's interesting because this is still a very expensive system, I think, to still be selling this well. I just I felt like Sony probably only shipped out just so many of these things to Japan maybe thinking it wouldn't have even done this kind of these kind of sales and now they're sort of seeing that with stock issues but i mean we'll see in the coming weeks i just i don't really expect the ps5 pro to continue flying off store shelves in japan i think we already saw like it's the like the the highs here with its opening week it's just it's just a very expensive system very enthusiast system i don't really know how many companies could actually show up in japan and sell a console just a box that's 750 dollars like i Sony's probably the only one really now that can do this, uh, but still, nonetheless, the PS5 Pro tracking near 100,000 systems in Japan, and then, of course, the Switch is the powerhouse that it is and will continue to be, I'm sure, for quite some time in Japan, actually approaching now, by the way, 35 million units. I, I think it's going to get there probably in the first th two or three months of next year, of course, depending on how things go when Nintendo does finally announce their next system. But we'll see how the holiday shopping goes coming up here next month. And in our last bit of news, I threw something fun in here for all of you Metroid fans that have been waiting to hear just more about Metroid Prime beyond previously known, of course, as Metroid Prime 4, as it was unveiled in that direct and got people really excited because it, it looked very good uh, for being on a system that, as we've talked about, is going into its eighth year here pretty soon. But it looks like the website was updated, which you can see this is posted up by Stealth, um, where it mentions that Nintendo added the Metroid Prime 4 to the official Metroid website, and it says coming soon. People kind of lost their mind a little bit on this one, like, oh, it, it still says 2025. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, that, that seems like we kind of knew that. And I was expecting first half of 2025, so coming soon makes a lot of sense here. I just don't think this is a holiday 2025 release. I, I I feel like this is one that would come out, I assume, before the Switch 2 itself releases or maybe that same month. This, to me, feels like a March or an April release and maybe the Switch 2 still makes it out before the summer and maybe this is one that has that cross-gen kind of release. I, I, I think that all lines up pretty well and this is a game that really could show off what the next system could do. I and mean, we saw what it looked like on the, on the current Switch and Retro's very good at getting a lot out of, yes, weaker hardware, but they're also pretty good about getting a lot out of strong hardware as well. So that that would be fun to see. So here's hoping maybe a, just a release similar alongside the Switch 2 and give us some sort of patch so that we can really experience some cool stuff there in Metroid Prime Beyond when it comes to the visuals. And before we go to the comment of the day, we'll take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I ask which of these upcoming Microsoft games are you most interested in? Okay, Fable is number one, then Indiana Jones, then Avowed, then South of Midnight. I think South of Midnight had a pretty good showing recently in previews, but Fable, there was, uh, there's been some discussion around this going around, and um, Fable's looking, sounds like it's looking pretty good, and I'm, the thing with Fable, though, is it feels like it's, it's still a ways off. I, I'm really hoping they get Fable out next year, even if it's like holiday 2025, it's, it, it, it feels like we've been talking about Fable for a long time. And, I mean, we kind of have. They showed it to us very, very early on with not too much to go on. And since then, we've gotten more and more and more. I'm just, I'm ready to see what exactly they have in store for us when it comes to combat, uh, progression in your character, creation, decisions you can make in the world, how alive all that is around you. So here's hoping Playground has spent this time, as I assume they have, really cooking up something special. But here's also hoping we can actually see and play it maybe in 2025. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Punky Dudester who says the PlayStation Portal is exactly the same thing as the Wii U tablet. 
Not quite. See, the Wii U tablet had a direct wireless connection to the Wii U, whereas the PlayStation Portal actually has to route to your router and then back to your PS5, right? So there is something there in between, whereas the Wii U, it didn't have any of that. Now, here's the thing that's kind of funny about that. I actually wouldn't mind if the PlayStation Portal was more similar to the Wii U tablet in the sense that there was a direct connection in that same room, eight feet away from your PS5, like, like I typically sit here, and that would... I assume give you just a, a better overall connection, better image quality, uh, probably much better in terms of input latency. Those are all things I think would be really cool to have as an option. Still give you the ability to go through your router if you want. Maybe if you're not home and you want to use just an internet connection to play off your PS5, but give you that best possible connection. If maybe it is something that sits on the coffee table or on your nightstand or something and your PS5 is right there in the same room. So in that regard, it's not like the Wii U tablet, but I kind of wish it was. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. If you missed yesterday's news wave, I'll leave it up here in a card, or maybe you wanted to check in on the latest Game & Talk episode that happened last night, I'll leave it right below. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 Eastern time for Newswave.